So about a month ago, a friend of mine called Ant, um, who makes these replicas of different cars, said that he would, uh, he would lend me a DB4 Baqueta. Uh, I was really excited because I saw the car at Top Marks. And then maybe eight days ago, he told me the car wasn't finished because the engine wasn't going to be uh, sent in time. So he said he was giving me a DVR1, and he sent me a photo. And I, I know this guy. Uh, he runs a Vanta company, and he does a fantastic job. And I saw it, and I thought it looked like a toy car, kind of. I didn't know what to expect. He told me it was a replica. I've never really had much experience with replicas. I don't know, you know how they are in the flesh. Uh, he told me it had a Corvette engine. Uh, mixed to a Tremec gearbox and so I wasn't really sure what to expect you know what it sound like what it looked like the size of it the interior nothing really and then so I was driving with Anthony a friend of mine to go pick up the car it was on the back of a trailer and I was about 100 meters away when I first saw the British racing green and the lumps uh, above the driver's side and I thought I actually thought it was a real DBR1 so I thought he pulled a prank on me and he would sent a real one so uh, then I got closer to the car, and it was literally every little detail I looked at was spot on, pretty much. Um, there was you know, no scratches on the car after the building. The, the rims were perfect. The, the color was awesome. The five stickers looked amazing. So basically, I was just really impressed with the attention to detail that Ant had put into the work. Then we took the car home, and we had to offload it. Uh, so I was lucky enough to actually sit in the seat and start it up. And as soon as I started up, it was completely different to anything I'd ever felt before. The, the Corvette engine, Corvette LS3 engine, uh, produces 560 horsepower. Um, mixed with Tremec gearbox, as I said. So you can imagine that it has a very, very like deep American rumbly sound. And so I started up, so you have all this key procedures, you have to put one key in, then a second key in, wait 10 seconds, then press a button. And as soon as you start it up, you kind of feel like everything around you has stopped. All you hear is the sound, and you feel the vibrations in the seat. And it's really like nothing I've ever really felt before. Um, when you're inside, you notice the interior, of course. The interior kind of in these small bucket seats with a four-point harness, wooden steering wheel, and you really do think, wow, I'm in the real thing, I'm in a 20 million pound car, which is what the original DDR1 was sold for. So, it's really something which you can't, you can't transmit through words, which is what we're trying to do now, I know, but it's something which you have to experience to know what it's like. Um, the next step for me was driving it down to Monaco, and obviously, as you can expect, it was just everyone turning around, everyone could, wanted to get a close look at the car, everyone wanted to hear the car. Um, which was fantastic for me because we put stickers on it for advertisement. But, I mean, basically, it's not like... Modern cars and classic cars are very different, and, and replicas is something I never really got into because I didn't have that much interest. But I'm seriously interested in seeing more of these because it was just completely different in a fantastic way. And it's having an old car with the upsides of having a modern car, so, you know, better engine, better gearbox, all these different things. So, to be honest, I was really... I was really impressed and uh, I hope you guys are too.